guys, it's Zach, or Platinum Perfection, if you follow me on Instagram. So today I am here at Suburbia Salon in Studio City, California, my lovely model, Charlotte. So um, what we're doing today is I'm showing you some balayage type lightning with some creative toning. So as you can see, I've already done half of her hair um, with, with the Blondie, uh, Blondie Forcing Lightener by Sports Cop Professional. Um, I did a balayage type of look, but with foil. So I've actually already done one piece down here on this side. Um, you can see it's already on there. So I'm just going to start working my way. Can you do a shout out to see if everyone can see what's going on? Yeah, by the way, can you guys see in here? Because we've been having a few technical difficulties. So if you can hear us and see us, please let us know. If not, it says, come on, Platinum. We're excited to see. Where is it? Can't see anything. Oh my gosh. Um, We've got Linda from Portugal. California. We've got New Zealand. Okay. You, people from all over. And are you guys seeing? Yes, yeah. I see a yes exclamation point. Stephanie, you see us? You can see. Sorry, we've had some tough technical yeah. difficulties getting started here. I think they're seeing. Okay. All good. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so sorry. Unfortunately, the first foil, you know, we were having some difficulties. But basically, what I am starting with is the back combing to get a nice blend. So I'm just taking about, I'd say, quarter inch sections right here above her ear, and just back combing it to where I would say about 50% of the hair in this section is all teased up. And then I'm just gonna feather on the lightener up towards the root area and then fully saturate it from the mid length down. Zach, do you wanna tell us why you back comb? I back comb because what that does is it brings up a good portion of the hair within this section and pushes it all up against her scalp with leaving some of the ends of it down in a very random kind of way. So that way when you comb out this back comb, even though I'm being careful to like feather up the lightener, it's gonna make it even more blended so that there's no harsh lines in it. And they probably didn't see actually what I mixed up because of the little mix up we had in the beginning, but I'm using the new Sportscock Professional Blonde Me Lightener with 20 volume. And what's amazing about this stuff is I can get away with literally never using higher than 20. And I can get crazy amount of lift. Like some of these foils that I did already on this side that's finished only sat on there for 15 minutes. So. Yeah, and you guys, if you're starting late, sorry, because we were showing, Zach has pre-lightened half of our beautiful model, Charlotte, here. So half of her head is done and half is not done. And he's going to be showing... Um, lightning on this half and then doing some cool creative toning as well. And if you guys want to give us a shout out, tell us where you're from. Schwarzkopf Professional is going to be giving away a whole set of everything you need to do to create this look with their new um, Blonde Me system to 10 lucky people. Also, I think if any of you watching have played around with this lightener yet, I would like to know what you guys think of it as well because I am loving it because, as you guys know, if you do follow me already, I do a lot of really, really intense blondes um, on people's hair, you know, that maybe you might not think to get that light. And in the past, you know, Blondie's always been great. I've been using the, the other Blondie for the past, I'd say, two years consistently. And it worked really well. But even with that one, I did have to usually use on a lot of my like Asian and Hispanic clients, I would have to use you know, 40 volume to get them to platinum. But what's really cool that I've been seeing since I started using this new formula is I can get literally anyone to white blonde with just 20. And something else, somebody asked here, Jen, if you're using a bond builder with this. No, that's yeah. what's so cool about this. Zach, you want to speak to yeah, that? Exactly. So this lightener has a bond building technology built right into it. So because of that, you have no need to add anything additional. Like, the hair comes out usually feeling better after you lighten than it did before. Like, her hair, we literally didn't put anything in it, and it's, like, silky and strong. Like, it doesn't feel any different than her virgin hair over on this side. So you just mix up your lightener, you mix it up with your developer, and you're good to go. So we really got people from all over. Shout out to Atlanta. Yeah, let us know where you guys are from. South Africa. South Africa. Huntington <laughs> Park, California, Missouri. And a shout out to the salon we're at too that we missed before. We have to say thank you to Suburbia Salon yeah, you, in Studio City, who's hosting us here, a beautiful salon in Studio City. So we want to say thank you. So I'm careful too. I want to show that as I'm always bringing it up closer around. Her hairline. 
because you really want that brightness like around the face. So you can see the first two sections I did, I just did this whole section and I back combed it. And now what I'm doing is kind of doing a really fine weave like this. Zach, and then you're back asking this. where to get it? Where do you, you get yours? I get mine in Cosmoprof. Cosmoprof. Yeah. Exactly. Also in New York area, you can go to Paramount. And also do Ulta. Oh, Ulta sure is too. You know it. <laughs> Lizette says you're so cute like a Ken doll uh -huh. Adam, should we show him more <laughs> <laughs> thank you I'll take that as well. um, again people want to know what products you're using I think they just uh, just tuning in. in right now I'm just using the sports car professional new formula bond me with the bond building technology in there bond enforcing technology um, 20 volume and can you use great rates? A lot of people are confused about like, some people want to use 40 volume just because they uh, think it's going to be like, make the hair lighter faster. Yeah, what no, I, I know it's kind of like, especially for me, like, like I was saying, if you've watched my work for the past couple years, like I was all about 40 volume, 50 volume. Sometimes I would use literally like 130 volume to get the kind of results that my clients are asking for. But with this lightener, you never ever need to go above 20 volume. Somebody else asked if the other side was done for who's joining. Zach pre-lightened yes. this side and now is now on this side. doing the left side. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, so I wanted you to see the level of lightness that I'm going for. So I already did that side. Now I'm going to lighten this side. And then while this is lifting, I'm going to show you the toning on this side. So that way we can fit in the whole head within you know, a shorter time span. Did you talk about why you back comb before you foil? Yeah, but I can... I can Say it again. So yeah. basically, I like to back even the sections that I'm weaving. I back comb a little bit because the back combing it takes so that all the hair is not running the same way. Even if I feather it, you can still get some bleeding and some lines. So by pushing some of this hair up, you diffuse the line. So now there's some hair that would otherwise be down here is now up here. So you're moving it up there. So it's just gonna help to make sure that it's totally seamless because. You know, she's 13 years old. She's not going to be doing her hair every four weeks. Like, she needs something that's going to, you know, be dramatic and, like, give her a big change, but also not something that's going to be a ton of high maintenance. So, by having it really nice and blended with just her natural color fading into this bright blonde, um, it's going to be really low maintenance. She can go six months and it'll, it'll still look good. And Bugs just asked a question that I love because we were talking about this before we went live. Mm -hmm. um, she asked, on Asian hair, what volume do you use? Still 20, like, believe it or not. So you, you guys, you probably know I do a lot of Asian clientele and I do a lot of platinum on Asian clients. And in the past, even you know, with them coming in every four weeks to get their roots touched up, I would always have to use 40 volume. That was just the only way that I could get them as light as I need to get them. But since SourceCop has uh, released this new formula, I literally use 20 on all of those same clients, and it comes out lighter faster. So I know it like sounds crazy, like it shouldn't be able to lift that much, but it honestly truly does. And some Argentina, the South Africa in the house, shout out. And somebody else asked, what are we going to be toning with here? So if you want to say what we're going to be okay. doing here for those who have just joined. So we're going to do lots of fun stuff with the toner. I'm going to do, basically what I'm going for is like a very muted kind of smoky pastel look. So I'm going to be mixing a few different lines from Sportscom Professional. I'm going to be using some of the uh, boosters from Agora. I'm going to be using some of their uh, Absolute Silver collection, the toners, and also some of the new blonde new toners. So I'm going to kind of show how you can play around and mix different toners together and add pigments to them to increase how much um, pigment is actually deposited in the hair. We got a good question coming in. What's the longest you let the bleach develop with the 20 volume? Um, let's see. The longest I've done so far is probably four hours. So I know that sounds like a long time, and sometimes people say, they think it's better to you know, reapply, but in my experience, I always get the best, like cleanest, brightest, like most even results. If I just do one really thorough, very you know, well-saturated application and just let it sit and do its thing. It doesn't matter you know, how long it takes, if you just keep letting it go and go, it, as long as the bleach stays 
damp and you don't let it dry out, it will keep lifting. I had a really good question. He'll ask you to use heat. No, never, never, never. That's, I'm glad you asked that because I didn't want to forget that. Never use any sort of heat with laundry. It literally, like, it doesn't need it. It lifts well enough on its own. If you do choose to add heat, what's going to happen is it's actually going to separate and liquefy, and then it'll like drip down on the client, it'll be a big mess, and it's not gonna help you get any more lift. It lifts quickly enough on its own. So no, never, oops, never use it. Um, yeah, if you do that too, it'll also make it foam up and get a little bit out of control, so. Can you give a shout out to Lizette? <laughs> yeah, I say Lizette. I think that's Trent's, I think it's Trent's on Instagram. You're right. Yeah, that's it. And then somebody asked, how big are the subsections that you're taking? Um, I'd say, what, like a, a quarter inch maybe? This thick? So yeah. I, you want to see through them. It's important. So you can see your hand through there. Got a question about the difference between the new blonde me and the old blonde me. Well, the new... Bonding technology. Yeah, the new one has the bond enforcing, bond building technology. So you don't need to add anything to it to protect the hair. Why do you like that, Zach? I like it because, I mean, it cuts down on costs, you know, it's less products you have to buy, it, um, you know, it's less steps you have to take, it just makes, you know, your day a little bit easier, and it's nice to know that you have that production built into the lighter. it's not, it's not another thing you have to think about, so time is running, and yeah, it's just great to just save yourself the time, and the hair just comes out feeling, like, better after you bleach, it's almost like while you're lifting the hair, it's treating it. Question, what are you doing with the hair you left out? With the hair I left out, I'm literally just going to leave it. Because I still want a little bit of her natural to come through there. Because I don't want to turn her into like an ombre. Because I am still trying to have this look somewhat like, quote, natural. But, um, so a few little pieces here and there left out, I think looks nice. Like that's exactly what I did over here. And it kind of all blends together, but you get some variation in there. Really good question. Why don't you go all the way out of the color? Because I don't want it right to her scalp. I'm still, I'm trying to leave a rooty, kind of grown out look. And if I went up to her scalp, it would just look like fresh highlights. And that's not the, the look I'm going for. I want it to grow out really softly because I want it to be really low maintenance for her. What would you charge for a session that sits four hours with the bleach? <laughs> So with me, and that's a good question too, With when it comes to blonding, no matter how experienced you are and how long you've been bleaching people, like, you never know what someone's hair is going to do until you get in there and start lifting it. So the way I would handle new clients is I always am very, very clear in the consultation that I can't predict what their hair will do. And so I tell them, this is the rate per hour. So set an hourly rate for yourself and you have to base that on you know, where you live, like what salon you're at, you know, your your area and all that. Determine what you think is, you know, a fair price for your work per hour. And then just never promise anything. Just tell people, this is what I charge per hour. I need you to book, you know, a session. The more hours they are willing to book and the more money they're willing to invest is what's going to get them to their desired level. So basically, it's really up to them how much they want to spend and how long they want to sit in your chair. If they only want to book you know, the minimum amount of time, then, you know, they might not get there as quickly. But if they're cool with booking out your whole day, then, you know, they'll leave that day exactly how they want to look. Good question. Can you put this on the scalp? Yes. I put it on the scalp every day. Every day. And every day. How has the effect of that? It's really great. Like, I've noticed everyone says that it um, is a lot more comfortable. I have, I've had people come in, you know, to me for the first time and they're really nervous because they've had bad experiences with burns on their scalp and like a lot of irritation and they're sitting there like laughing because they're like, I can't even feel it. So it's very, very comfortable on the scalp. And Zach, you were talking about pricing, that what you charge per hour. Before we started, you talked about what you charge for retouches and what your rule is. Yes. Okay. So my price for root touch-ups is $100 even. But that is contingent upon them not going more than four weeks. Because, you know, you guys all know if you have bleach touch-up clients, it's way different between four weeks and six weeks. Like, it, it, once it grows past that, like, quarter of an inch mark, it's more like a color correction than a root touch-up. Because you start to get the variation in temperatures from it being too far from the scalp. 
and then you're getting banding and you're having to leave it on a lot longer. So, yeah, that's the price. But if they want to stretch it out and not get their wrist touched up when they should be getting them touched up, then the price goes up. Question for you. Do you precondition before or add conditioner to the mix? Uh, no. No, this, this lightener literally works so I don't have to add anything to it or to their hair. If somebody's hair is really, really dry and brittle to begin with and I just want like some extra protection, I'll use some of the, uh, the keratin, it's called keratin restore mask, I yes. believe. I'll add a little bit of that, um, just you know, on the areas that look bad, maybe on their ends, but I mean, usually I don't even have to do that. Will the lightener still be active if it dries out? No. Lightener only works as long as it's damp. That's another reason why, even though I'm doing like technically kind of like a balayage, I'm still insulating every section in a foil because that's going to prevent it from drying out and let it lift for as long as I want it to. Here's a question again. Are you using Fiberplex? No, I'm not. Ew. Nope, I'm just using the straight blonde me. It's got everything you need all built in there. The new blonde me has the bonding in it. Yeah. So you can see I'm getting, I'm making sure that it's super, super, super saturated. Because that's another key, because the bleach, you know, as it's reacting and the chemicals are doing their thing, um, it sometimes wants to pull away from the hair a little bit. So by making sure that literally every little strand of hair is soaked in bleach, I'm going to not have any cool spots or dry spots or any unevenness, especially on the ends where you want it bright. Some people... Sorry, why are you weaving some sections and not others? I want a variation because I just want to make sure this is super, super blended. So I like to alternate between weaving and backcombing and then just some pieces just straight balayage with no weaving or backcombing just because that way it's like makes everything more random and make sure that you can have a really smooth blend. And another question about volume. Everyone's got volumizer questions. Do you suggest 20 volume even if it's color treated? Yes. I never never use more than 20 for anything. Like even if it even if you can't get their hair where they want it in one day because they have color on there already or something, like you're not gonna get a better result if you go with a higher volume. All that's gonna happen is it's gonna go way too fast and it's gonna be unpredictable and your results are gonna be uneven. So it's better to just not try to rush through it and just let it go low and slow. But you'll be surprised, even with 20 volume, even if they've got, you know, box color on their hair or something, it'll still bust through it if you just give it time. Somebody asked, are you concerned swirling the ends of the hair about damaging them because that's the weakest part of the hair? No, not at all. I'm just swirling it because I'm trying to make sure that they're very well saturated. So, I mean, this, like I was saying, the lightener, it has the, the bond enforcing technology built into it so everywhere that this bleach is on is actually gonna make the hair feel better so I'm not worried about having it really saturated because I want to get that brightness on those ends. You got someone asking what is the bleach called again? It's uh, Blonde Me by Sports Cup Professional and it's the Bond Enforcing Technology. Nine plus. Nine plus. Oh yeah I can't forget the nine plus. <laughs> First one to lift over nine levels. <laughs> so Michelle's commenting about the smell. What do you think about the smell of the... It smells actually good. Like, it doesn't even smell like... It doesn't even smell like bleach. It <laughs> kind of has almost like a florally kind of smell to it. Yeah, it's not bad at all. It doesn't like burn your nose or you have to like not stand over it. Pe people keep saying, and I think we can't say it enough based on your reaction, no heat with this, you no said? Heat, never? No heat, never? No heat. <laughs> and always just 20 volume. Yeah. Even when you are doing Asian or people with super dark, thick black hair. So yeah. people, late joiners, keep commenting on that. And speaking of commenting, you guys, comment because Schwarzkopf Professional is going to pick 10 people who are commenting and give you guys a whole set of this amazing blonde me so you could try it yourself. So chime in here. Okay, from Northern Ireland, Sarasota, Florida. Mm -hmm. How long is this taking to, uh, to lift? Really quick. The whole, by the time I finish all of the foils on this side, I maybe let it sit for about 20 minutes. So, and how often are you checking? Um, I don't know, about every 10 minutes or so. So now that I finish this side, I like to, what I usually do when I finish a section is just kind of open the first row. And look how quick that's already getting wet. It's already like, 
at least a level almost nine. So yeah, and that's just 20 volume. And her hair is about, I'd say like a level six, six-ish. And when you do Asian hair and go from black hair to platinum, yeah. do you have to lift twice? No. No, I, ne I, like never, I never reapply. Um, what I just do is, I, I, like I was saying earlier, I just make sure that my application is really heavily saturated and re really thorough, and I just keep it all insulated and wrapped up with you know plastic or foil or whatever it is I'm doing, and I just let it sit. Because as long as the bleach stays wet, it's gonna keep lifting. So there's no need to rinse all that whitener out and then have to go through the whole reapplication process. Get Fresh. it on there and leave it. Why are you only holding the corner of the foils? Because, oh, that's another, that's actually really good that somebody noticed that. Um, because like we were talking about, you know, it lifts really quickly. You don't want to add heat to it. But of course, naturally, because the chemicals are reacting, it's going to generate its own little bit of warmth. And especially down here where it's resting on her body, her body heat's coming up on there. So I don't tightly fold up the foils at all. I kind of just put it enough to keep it tidy, but this is still very open. And that's because I want the warmth that it pr produces in there to be able to escape. Because sometimes people will complain about lightener um, foaming up in foils, and that's because they pack them all really tight into these little packages and then those gases that are being produced can't get out, and so it just foams up. So by just loosely, loosely just kind of slapping them down, closed on themselves, um, you can avoid that, and it won't expand. Zach, of course, everyone is asking what you use on your hair, and how do you get your amazing blonde? Okay, so what I use on myself is the blonde meat with the bond forcing builder in it, and I use seven volume on myself. I'm a natural, I'm a, slightly lighter than her. I'm probably closer to like a level seven, but I have a lot of red undertone in my hair. So um, it is actually, for how light I am, it is kind of really tricky to get you to lift, but like, yeah, this is just use seven volume. And I let it process for about 20 to 25 minutes on my roots, just room temperature. I don't put a cap on or anything like that. And then for my toner, I use the Blondie toners in equal parts of the sand and the ice. So um, when we get to Tony, I'll talk more about that, but I like to mix a slightly warm or neutral base toner with an ash toner, because that way you get, in my opinion, the perfect balance of warmth and coolness, and it just makes really nice, neutral, kind of pearly tones. So that's what I use on myself. This is a great question. We've got Anna saying, I've always wanted to try this, but it's scary to try something new. Yeah. What do you think about that I mean, when you first want to try new products? Well, with me, honestly, like, I'm always the type of person to just, like, be my own guinea pig. So if there's something that comes out that I'm really curious about, what I'll usually do is I'll get it and I'll try it out either on myself or if I'm really scared about it, maybe I'll try it on some old, like, some of my wife's old extensions or something <laughs> so I don't ruin anybody's hair. But um, I think it's really important as a hairstylist to never get too comfortable with anything. Like, to always be on the lookout for new stuff. Because, like, I mean, just in the couple years that I've been doing here, like, the technology has improved so much, especially when it comes to blonding. There's so many great products out there now that I think expanding your horizons and always trying new things is really important. So don't be scared. If you're too scared to do it on a client, then get some, get some, you know, some hair extensions or a, a doll head even and just play around with it and just see how the product you're trying works. Question, why did you back home more on the top section than the bottom sections? Um, because the top up here is why I really want to make sure it's rooty because it's right on top of her head. And um, I mean, it's just kind of like I was saying before, it's just kind of very random. But around her face, I want it really bright. So I want more hair to be blonde than to not be blonde. Like you can see on this side, it's much, it's much brighter around her face. And this is a great follow-up question. Do you always do the front first and then back last? Yes, I always do the front first. Even when I'm doing an all over bleach out or anything, I always, always do the front first because the front, first of all, it's the most important part because it's right around their face and you always want that to be the brightest. But then also, if let's say they're lifting really quickly and you want to take out some of the foils um, or you need to, you know, like, you can't, you're not fast enough to get it all done at once. 
Um, it's a lot easier to take them out, I feel like, from the front because you can just have a towel and just slide the foils out and rub it off. Whereas down here, the hair is a lot more bulky, so it's harder to kind of get in there and get those foils out if you need to. Uh, great question coming in from Michelle. Is there a hair mask that would help after this process? Yeah, I always like to finish off with the uh, the Keratin Restore Mask. And is also, that from Blondie? Also by Blondie, yes. It's amazing. So yeah, that's... That's great. And also, too, I'm going to take that and mix it in with the, the toners because you can actually do that. Since, since I want some pastels, um, adding mask to your toner actually will help kind of pastelize the pigment and then also do like a nice little treatment while, while the hair is being toned. That's a great question. Why won't you move up in developer when getting to the last section of the hair? Won't the first area applied lift fastest? Normally, that's kind of what I used to do, but I've just noticed with this lightener in particular, it comes up very even. So that's another reason too why you just have to be mindful of like what, what shape the hair is in to begin with, you know? So as long as you're mindful of that and you, you, you plan it out the right way, like you, you don't have to be increasing the color. But like, let's say she had really, really long hair and I knew that this is gonna take me a lot longer or if I was doing um, like a full bleach out, uh, what I might do is start with seven volume and then work my way up to 20 by mixing different increments of seven and 20 to kind of slowly increase as I go. So sometimes if I have somebody with really, really thick hair or I know my application is going to take me a very long time, I will do that. But this application is pretty quick. You got so. some late joiners, Zach. We're asking again, why do you tease the <coughs> hair towards the scalp? I'm teasing the hair to diffuse the lines so that I have a nice soft blend. So if they want to see kind of like how I did it already on the side, you can see her natural just flows into the, the blonde at the bottom. So the teasing helps to make sure you're not going to have any lines. Question, what is your end result you're looking for? I'm going to show you that's the end result we're going for on the other side there, right? Yeah, so this is the lift that we're looking for. It's about like, I'd say like a level nine-ish. For the most part? Not toned. Not toned. There's zero toner in this at all. This is just the raw, just lifted hair. And then what we're going to do is some really fun stuff with um, toner. So I'm going to do some like smoky kind of silver pastel. Like I, I want to make like some blues and purples and pinks. And um, I'm going to show you how you can add pigments to toners and mix toners, almost like paint kind of, to make like custom shades. Akila says you've given me the encouragement to leave 40 volume alone. Oh, good. <laughs> I know it's scary. It was hard for me to get rid of the 40 volume, too. I was using literally 40 volume all day, every day. Like, except for my, like, curls of, like, maybe natural level, like, 8. I could get away with, like, 30 or 20 before, but everyone's 20. Some people now, I've converted them, like, my people that were 20 before, now they're just 7 volume. Zach, for people who didn't see you mix the bleach before, they were asking if you measured or not. No, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of my thing is I eyeball everything, but I've never had any issues with doing that. So um, I go I go for a texture more so than measurement because depending on what kind of application you're doing, you might want the bleach thinner or you might want it you know really thick. So since I'm kind of painting it on. Um, I want it to be thin enough to where I get a nice glide on the hair, but I don't want it so thick that it uh, gets dry or clumpy. So I mix it to about the texture of like a Greek yogurt. We've got someone calling in saying, uh, how long do you process your hair? My hair? No, no, the hair you're working on. Oh, um, so from by the time I finish putting all the foils on the other side of her hair, I let it sit for about 25 minutes, I would say. So, I know this is repetitive, but we got someone asking again, what is this lightener? Can you tell me about it? Yes, I will tell you all about it all day here. It's <laughs> this one, it's the Blonde Me 9 Plus, Sports Cup Professional, with the bond enforcing technology built right in there, so you don't have to add anything to it. Amazing. Anybody who does any type of bleaching, like, needs to at least give this one a try. That's all I can say. Tech question here, if the hair is thicker, do you recommend a lower volume of developer starting out and then a higher volume on the other sections? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you're gonna, if your application you know is gonna take you a while, 
it's good to start off lower and move up. Like, this is not going to take me too long. Like, it's, it's pretty quick because I'm not, I'm not lifting all of her hair. So I'm just using 20 all the way through. And especially because I want the front to get lighter than the back, I'm not trying to get the back of her head as blonde as the front. So, um, yeah, you just have to judge on the individual's hair. But I do that all the time. So you would start by using, like, you know, maybe use just seven in your first section. And then maybe by the time you use up that bowl of whitener and you're mixing it up, maybe add equal parts seven volume and 20 volume. So, you know, it makes somewhere in between. And then work your way up until maybe the last section you're using just straight 20. So you can totally do that. Just mix developers. Zach Alyssa thinks your, your hair is beautiful. Oh, thank you, Alyssa. All right, can we get some tips from El Crystal Perez on Latina dark hair, please? Yeah, some tips on Latina hair. Latina hair is very tricky because, like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen my wife on Instagram. She is Latina, so her hair is naturally extremely dark and extremely thick. And, I mean, her hair is pretty much white, so any, they can still get it. I can't tell you how many times I've had... Hispanic clients come in and they're like, I've been to like all these different hairdressers and they, you know, they told me you can't be platinum, like it's not possible. Like don't let anyone tell you that you can't have it because you can have it. It's just a matter of patience. Like it's usually not something that's going to happen in one sitting. Even if you take your time and you're careful and all that, you need to, you need to go slow and do it in stages. Otherwise you're going to compromise the hair too much. But, um, I mean, even that's not a rule. Like, if I always tell people who, when they're asking about like how do you know what to mix up, to go not on the color of their hair but to go on the texture of their hair. Because I'll have people where they're naturally, you know, jet black, but they have really fine hair and they will lift way quicker and brighter than somebody who's maybe only like a dirty blonde but it's really thick and coarse. That's super interesting. Yeah, you don't don't judge it off of how the color of the hair. Judge it off of the texture of their hair because the texture is what determines how quickly that bleach gets into your hair and can eat up those color molecules and take the melanin out. Got a question here on what, what uh, company Blondie is from? It is from Sports Cop Professional. <laughs> and mixing ratio question. Okay, so I, I, I eyeball everything. So mixing ratio is just honestly the texture that you want. So depending on if you're doing like an all over bleach out, a balayage, a foil, whatever it is you're doing, um, just mix it up to the texture that you like to work with and it will work. So like sometimes when I'm doing um, like a full solid bleach out, trying to get somebody like totally platinum, okay, let's check these foils by the way. Look how light she's already getting. Wow. See? So, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, sometimes what I'll do, like if the ends, you know, the ends are always going to be more porous. So what I'll do sometimes is mix it a little thicker on the stronger, you know, like the root and like mid shaft area, and then make it a little runnier towards the end. So it goes maybe a little bit slower. But yeah, just mix it up by the texture you like. Even with toners, I don't measure anything. Uh, Lynn wants to know, are you going to show the entire process, the toning and styling? Uh, yes, I'm definitely going to show the toning. I don't know time-wise if we'll show the styling on camera, but photos will definitely be posted. Um, but yeah, once I've finished the lightener application over here, I'm going to move to the other side that I've already lifted and show you what I'm going to do with the toner. Question from Leanne. What if someone pulls red and orange when you lighten? Does this happen with Lonnie? So anybody is going to go through the red-orange phase. If they are pulling red and orange, that means you're taking it off too soon. Because anybody, as soon as you put the bleach on the hair, that's what's going to happen. If I, if I put this lightener on and then wash it off, you know, too soon, and I didn't let it get past that red or orange stage, then that's what I'm going to be left with. But if you leave the lightener on and let it do its work, it'll go past that and it'll get to the yellow and the pale yellow or whatever level that you're trying to get to. So if a client is pulling a certain color, it's just because you took the, the liner off too soon. Alicia's asking, she's trying to get an icy blonde and she's finding it impossible to get. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'd love to try their toners. How do you get icy blonde? Okay, so the most important thing with icy blonde, platinum, um, you know, white hair, when you're trying to get those really, really extremely cool toned blondes, 
the number one mistake that I see that people make is they don't lift the hair enough to begin with, and then they're trying to correct or get that icy blonde with toners, and you really can't do that. And even if you do, it might look good for a short time, but as we all know, toners are not permanent color, so that toner's gonna wash out, and then you're gonna be left with whatever level of lift you bleach the hair to. So, when I am trying to get any kind of silvery, platinum, anything within that realm, I always aim to get the hair to the color of butter. So, like, if you look at butter, it's pretty much white, but it just has that very slight, like, kind of, like, creamy tone to it. Like, just a tiny bit of yellow left so that you know your hair is not cooked through and it's clear or anything. But, um, if there's any gold or, like, lemony yellow tone in there, it's not gonna, it's, that's still gonna show through. No matter how much toning you do, it's not gonna last and the color's not gonna stay. I have to say hi to Daniela from, um, Napoli, and he's using 20 volume, yes. 20... Venti volumi. Yeah, yeah so you notice too, that once I get to this top, this is always like a bigger section with a lot of backcombing. Just to make sure she's got a really good amount of shadow, kind of laying over everything, just to make sure um, it looks nice and blended. Tina's asking, why not start with 20 volume and gradually go up to higher levels of developer, you know, for timing's sake? Because it's better to, you'll get better results if you don't rush it. So obviously, you know, you don't want to spend, you know, an insane amount of time on something, but if you want to get the best results, you can't be too worried about how long it takes. If you're trying to rush and use higher volumes, you're not going to get what you want quicker, you're just going to get more damage. So, you know, I mean, I've experimented, like I, all I do is bleaching pretty much all day. I've definitely pushed limits when it comes to using high developers and all that, and, um, like you honestly do not need to use higher than 20 volume. Question with the liner, does it have a developer? Yes, it does. It comes in 7 volume or 20 volume. Okay. A question again about the, do you have to add old flex? No, you do not. It has the bond forcing built right into it. You literally don't add a single thing to it. And the hair comes out feeling like softer than it did before you even lifted the hair. Like you guys can already see, like, let's show another check up again. Yeah. How light that's getting. And that's just 20 volume. Question, how often should the light have be remixed? Uh, I just kind of basically, like, I'll mix up like a scoop at a time. And then, you know, once I use up that bowl, I just mix up more. I never mix up like a huge bowl of it and just keep working from the same bowl. I like to mix up fresh batches as I'm going. So just like one scoop of bleach, you know, however much developer I feel like I want, you know, based on the consistency I'm going for, and that's, that's all I do. So a lot of times I'll keep it at my station while I'm working, that way I can just, I have to keep running to the back, you know, I can just mix it up as I go. I've got a question from Cassandra about clay lighteners, I want to talk about clay lighteners a little bit? Yeah, so clay lighteners, I mean, honestly, it, it depends on what kind of clientele you have and what kind of results you're getting. Clay lighteners, to, in my opinion, are only good for if you're going for a very sun-kissed, like subtle amount of lift. You're never gonna get a very bright, intense blonde on somebody with a clay lightener because it's just gonna dry out too quickly. So I personally never use clay just because my clientele would not be happy with the amount of lift that you'll get with a clay. Got a question. If you're going for more of a balayage effect, why are you using foils? That's a good question. I'm using <laughs> foils because we're talking about, you know, controlling temperatures and drying out and all that. If this is exposed to the air, it's going to dry out quicker. The foil keeps everything trapped in there, so insulated, so it stays nice and moist and kind of forms this little own environment in there, and I'll get a lot more lift a lot quicker. So, yeah, I use that. I'm trying to get a balayage look, but I'm not actually just balayaging it. Do you ever use this to balayage? Um, yeah, sometimes. But like I was saying, all my clients, they want to be super light. So even though this lightener works amazingly, just any bleach in general, if it's exposed to the air, it's going to be colder. It's going to be exposed to, you know, the air and stuff, and it's going to dry out. So, I, yeah, I very, very rarely do I balayage. Only if, like... What I'll do sometimes if I'm in the process of 
converting somebody to platinum um, after I've already bleached them out like solid but maybe you know they still have some warmth left over in their ends the next time they come in then sometimes I'll just open air balayage their ends just so it's real gentle but I'm trying to lift out a little bit more of that leftover pigment. Uh, question, can it be used on the scalp? Yes, definitely. It's really, really great scalp bleach because it's super comfortable. So even for your clients that um, are maybe like really sensitive, this will not bother them. I have some clients that used to have to take Benadryl every time I would do their roots. And oh. with this, they can just chill and they don't, they're like, oh, I don't even feel like Melissa says I'm a level two. How many applications would you recommend to lighten the platinum? Just one. I never ever uh, recommend doing a, a multiple application. Just apply it once and let it sit until it's light enough. As long as you're very, very careful with your application to not overlap, if you're just touching up roots. Um, I mean, it's if it's just on the repo, there's no you don't have to worry about breakage because you're not overlapping it onto that previously light hair. So, you have a question about your back combing and your teasing. So how do you get that out? Do you go to the shampoo? Yeah, when I when I go to wash her out, I'll shampoo her hair and then I'll just take some of the, the keratin restore mask, also by Source Cost Professional, and um, just smudge that all over it and it does a really good job of just making the hair nice and slick and the tangles just come right out. There might be a tiny bit left afterwards, but nothing that you know like just a paddle brush won't take out. Okay, so we got all the foils in there. You can see she's getting nice and light over here. It's like I want her to. So now while this sits, now we're gonna move to toning stuff. He wants to know, is this the bleach you've used on your own hair? Yes, yes, this is what I use myself. So I use, this with seven volume on So, let's see. Question that everyone asks, do you measure? Do you no, not measure? I don't measure everything. <laughs> I've never had a problem with it ever either. Like some people they kind of freak out when I say don't measure, but I feel like it, no, it's never it's never caused an issue for me. So can you explain again that you already pre-light in this side? Yes, okay, so this is the side we already did. You can see it's you know it's brighter around her face and then kind of progressively gets a little bit more natural looking towards the back here. Um, so that's exactly what this side is going to be doing. And so while this is doing this thing, we're going to do all the fun toners over here. So, uh, like I was saying, I'm going for like a very kind of like smoky, like muted down pastel look. So, question, how, did you, how long did you leave the bleach on for this other side that you've already pre-lightened? Maybe by the time I finish the foils, probably like 20 to 25 minutes. So for all the toners, we're going to be using all seven volume, just for deposit only. And I want to mix up, I'm going to make three different shades. I want like just a basic like kind of smoky silver, just to kind of mute down a lot of it. And then I want little pops of like a violet and a pink. So first for the silver, uh, we're going to be using just the Agora by Post Cup Professional Absolute Silver Whites. Line. This is really great. They have, I believe, four different colors. There's uh, this one, which is the, the slate gray, it's a more intense gray. Then they have the straight silver, a gray lilac, and a dove gray. Um, they're all slightly different, but this one's just a good, just straight, neutral gray. So this is kind of going to be like my base toner. So I'm just going to squeeze out. All Shelly this. says she wants, she likes her shirt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to squeeze out that whole tube, and the mixing ratio for this is one to one, but like I said, I kind of eyeball everything, so. Can you smile for Charlotte? <laughs> Charlotte, <laughs> yeah, is graduating eighth grade in a week. Yeah. <laughs> and what I do too, you'll notice, like, sometimes you might notice you put a toner on and it kind of is not grabbing the way that you plan you can just like layer stuff on there. So like for example, I'm going to use just straight, what is it, slate gray. And if I notice that maybe it's not getting as intense as I want, what I'm going to, what I can do, and we'll see if it works out that way, is you can add boosters of straight pigment to your toner to kind of like up the pigment flow. And Zach, maybe just explain, this is not the way you would usually do it, 
But um, we're yeah. doing it this way because yeah. for timing reasons for yeah. Facebook Live. <laughs> exactly. Normally I don't do one side on one side, but we want to. We only we have a limited amount of time. So let me get some gloves on. Leslie Bath wants to know if someone has a vivid color purple and wants to go blonde, uh, would you suggest a color remover and then bleach or go straight with bleach? I wouldn't go straight with bleach because what can happen with bleach is it can um, drive the, those colors deeper into the hair. So the best thing that I have found to remove uh, like fashion colors is just vitamin C powder with shampoo. Okay, so this is the, the slate gray. Now, what I'm going to be doing for my purple shade is I'm going to use the blonde mean toner in lilac. And I'm going to add something to this. So, this is going to be a fun little pop of color. So, I'm going to take the lilac, like almost a little too, not quite, like three quarters of the way. And then I'm actually going to, because I want this to be a little bit gray, so I'm going to add some silver from the silver whites. Question again, does this lightener have its own developer? Yes, it does. 7 volume and 20 volume. Okay, so this is lilac from the blonde mean line, and then this is silver from the silver white line. And I'm mixing them together. Nobody's going to die because I'm doing them. So this will help give me like a nice purpley gray. And then to give it even more of a pop, I'm going to add some straight violet pigment to this. So this is 0 89 by Aurora, and this is like a purple violet booster. And with this, like, uh, you have to be really careful, it's pure pigment, you know? So I'm just going to add like a little, just a little drop of that. Question, do you have any other favorite lighteners? No. <laughs> this is all I use. Okay, so important thing when you're adding pigments to toners like this, is to not take this bowl and add developer right away. Because what will happen is it won't fully blend enough and you might get little specks of really intense purple or some whatever pigment you're adding. So I take just a straight color and whip it all together really, really good before I add the developer. Because the color is really thick and it kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, but it, basically, it just mixes better when you do it this way. Anytime I've added them all to my bowl and then added developer, I've been like, oh no, and there's been like a little like dark purple or blue, whatever spot in my hair. So get it all mixed up together first. This is the question of Blondie. They're asking if they can use the new developer with the new Blondie or can use the old developer. You can still use the old developer. Yeah, as long as you don't go over 20. Just don't go over 20 volume. So this is the silver with the lilac and with a little bit of 0-89. <laughs> People are freaking out about the vitamin C. They are? Yeah. Yeah, vitamin, vitamin C. Vitamin C powder, a brand, yeah, say it again. Okay, it's literally just vitamin C powder you get at any, like, vitamin store. And something, I think it's the citric acid in there, it really does an amazing job of just stripping color right out. Do so, you worry about it damaging the hair? No, not at all. Okay, Talia uh, says you make it look so dang easy. Oh, <laughs> uh, shucks. <laughs> Okay, now, have a now, like I said, the more random the better with this because it's going to give a nice blend. Okay, so now I'm going to use for my kind of blue shade, I'm going to use the Blonde Me Toner in Steel Blue. And why mixing different toners? What do you like about that? Um, because I, I just like to customize things. I like to make everything a little bit unique. And I just noticed that when you mix a little of this and a little of that, it just makes look that much more interesting than if you just squeeze something out of a tube and use it. So with the blue one, I'm going to see, I'm going to start off by just using straight steel blue um, and I might end up adding, layering something on top of it. I just kind of want to see how it grabs. So like I was saying, you can just almost use this like pink, like you just kind of mix stuff in there and see how their hair takes it because you guys all know like you never really fully know how someone's hair is going to take a turn. Question for Rebecca, do you charge separately for your blowouts? Um, if they're coming in for just a blowout, yes. But I don't like, if they're doing a color service, I don't charge an additional fee for the blowout part of that. Just because I feel like that should just be included, personally. Because they got it, like if you're going to color the hair, they got to see it done, you know? Question, do you have any 
So I'm going to start turning the back because uh, it's obviously it's darker back here, so it's going to need more time to grab. So I'm going to start here with just my slate gray. Can you tell, Jody's saying that she uses heat with this lightener. Can you tell her that's a big no-no, Jody? Jody, do not. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't had anything scary happen because this lightener uh, works so powerfully on its own that the heat just is going to make things go a little crazy. So I definitely do not suggest doing that. I've tried it in the past, not with the new Blondie, but I remember when I first um, decided to give Blondie a try. I, you know, I always kind of like, I'm free really with everything. You know, I don't measure whatever. I was like, oh, I don't need to read the instructions. And I did, um, I put some lightener, you know, all over a client's head and I stuck them under the heater like I used to. <laughs> and like within five minutes, there was like liquid like running down their face. And I was having to dry it off with towels. And I looked totally like unprofessional, like I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so after that, I was like, oh, maybe I should read the instructions. <laughs> and it clearly says, do not use it. So. But look how, you can already see that it's toning this out and making a nice, like, smoky, smoky gray. Zach, Shelly says you're super fun to watch and you're very smart and very educated. She's been doing uh, for here for 30 years. Thank and you. everything you say is true. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. So, there's no pattern with this. Literally, I'm just going to, like, play with it and see where I feel like putting a color. But look at how great, like, the pigment is. The slate gray, like you can, it's gorgeous. You yeah, can already ready. see that it's smoking out that blonde. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really nice. Mm -hmm. So here, I think I feel like putting the lilac. Yeah. So let's do that. So let's put some of this lilac. This is the one where I added the booster too. So it'll be interesting to see how this one grabs. Oh yeah, look right away. You can already kind of see. But see, I really like to have fun with Tori. Like I. You know, I didn't want to like have a predetermined plan of this is going to be my measurements for that. And I'll, like I didn't really plan any of this out. I just kind of like, okay, I want to kind of do this type of a look. And you just kind of go for it. Brittany's asking what your Instagram is. My Instagram is platinum underscore perfection. Question from Bugs. What if there's a darker coating of color on hair over the ends? then it's just going to take you a lot longer to bust that out. But the bleach will get it out if you let, give it time. It might not happen the way you want it to in one sitting, but that's why I think um, it's very, very important in your, to be um, really realistic in your consultation with the client so that they don't have the assumption that they can go from box colored hair to blonde in one sitting. Because you can only do so much, you know, like, and, but if you don't make it clear to them what they can expect, then you're going to be looking down at the end of it because then they're going to blame you because they don't know any better, you know, they don't do hair. So it's like our job as a stylist to make sure that we set their expectations in a realistic way before we even touch their hair. Is there a difference on toning wet hair or dry hair? Um, it'll grab quicker on dry hair. So for this, I really want a lot of pigment in there, especially because I obviously I didn't lift her anywhere close to platinum. So I want to get a really good amount of deposit on there, so toning it dry is, um, is going to help with that. Like you can see how quick it grabs. Linda wants to know, do you usually use toners with your lightener? Um, usually, yeah. I mean, it always is going to depend on what my end goal is, but if I'm going for like truly white hair, I use very, very minimal toner. Um, like for my hair, I really use like maybe a thumbnail size drop of the ice and the sand from the blonde toner with just um, a big bowl full of the mask, the Keratin Restore mask, and the, uh, a squirt of the Seven Volume Developer. So it's almost like a mask with pigment in it is how I tone my hair. And that's how I like to tone a lot of my really, really white blonde plants. Very minimal. Because you don't want to cover up all that great lift that you've got. Brandy wants to know, after bleaching and being dyed, my hair is a little fried. What can I do to help rejuvenate my hair again? I have thick coarse hair? Well, there's, um, I would say a good, like, first step you can take is, uh, the Source Guy Professional has a keratin restore treatment line. There's a step one, and then there's a step two that's a mask you can apply, and that's something you can get done at the salon if you, your stylist, um, uses Source Cop products, or if your stylist yourself, you can pick that up. 
Um, but I'm also really big on using natural things. So I like to tell people to use coconut oil and almond oil and stuff like that to kind of help the hair bounce back. But uh, it all just kind of is going to depend on what's already happening with your hair. Sometimes the hair's kind of past the point where anything can help it and you might need to do a little trim. So it's hard to say for sure. So yeah, I'm just grabbing slices and kind of alternating what I'm putting on there. And you can see the different tones happening already. This was the straight slate gray. It's going to be really nice and smoky. There's the lilac one with the purple. You can see those violet tones are kind of kicking in. You can see my thumb is like resting on my glove. <laughs> you can have a purple thumb. Zach Liz from Beauty School says so she's very proud of you and everything that you've accomplished. So she just commented. That's very sweet of you wants to know sometimes it's hard to pass a level nine. Do you have any tips? Just leave it on longer. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you might think this client's her, her hair won't go past. Anyone's hair will go past. It's just a matter of like being patient and just letting it go, letting it do its thing. Jessica wants to know how long does it usually take you to put in the full head of oils? Do you take um, out sections? How does it done? It definitely probably takes me longer than most people. Only because, like, I'm just very, very meticulous with things, but it really just depends on how light I'm trying to get them. So, you know, like for her, for example, I did it relatively quickly in a, for a full head, and maybe if I had done the full head at one time, it'd probably take like close to an hour. But um, sometimes it, I can spend two hours doing a whole, whole head of foil. So it just just depends on how light I'm trying to get them. Jaria wants to know: I bleach my hair. What's a great conditioner to use? The, the Swarzkopf uh, Professional, the new blonding one is amazing. Uh, what is it? It's bond enforcing, I believe. It has the bond enforcing technology that the bleach has also built into the shampoo and conditioner. So if you start using that like regularly, you'll notice a really big difference in your texture. Like me, for example, like obviously I'm super careful with my hair and everything and I know what I'm doing, but I still, you know, I bleach my hair heavily. So it makes my hair a little more coarse, and I have curly hair, so that doesn't help either. But since I've been using this stuff for about a month, my hair definitely, like, even the way it air dries is a lot different. It's a lot smoother. Like, I can actually get my fingers through it after I, after I wash it, so I would definitely give it a try. Yeah, Fiona, he is toning here. That's yeah, what's going on. The tone. Oh my goodness. Brittany says, what do you do when your highlighted pieces of hair have melted off? Oh my gosh. What could be a cause? Uh, you're probably using, I mean, so you many use, things. Your stylist used 40 volume. You should never put 40 volume in a foil, honestly. Like, in a foil, the, the lightener's trapped in there. Like, it, it, Lightener already heats up on its own, so if you got it in a foil, all that heat that it produces is stuck, especially if it's wrapped up tightly. So, first of all, I mean, just using 40 volume, that's really scary, but then in a foil, it's even worse. So, there's nothing you can do. I mean, if your hair is broken off like that, you, all you can do is let it grow back, but I would say um, have somebody do your hair that's not going to do stuff like that. <laughs> not going to risk it like that. Is this lightener nine levels of lift, question? It's nine plus levels of lift, so it will definitely take you to infinity and beyond. <laughs> 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 but yes, this is cool. You can start to see all the different tones happening. Like I said, I want this to be very, like, still, I don't want it to be crazy, you know, she's 13 years old, she can't be walking around looking like a punk, but I want there to be some fun, like, metallic, kind of smoky, Pastel tones going on in there. We got a few more questions about how to get the teasing out. The teasing. If you just use a mask, um, it'll come right out. Yeah, it's really, it's really not. It, it looks scary when you look at it because it's like it's all ratted up and stuff, but it, it comes out pretty, pretty easily. Question from Esme: How do you address a client who's determined to have you try to lighten them without bleaching? Uh, I tell them that. I'm not the person for them if they're going to try. You can't let them try to tell you how you're going to do your job, first of all. Like, it's not up to them to dictate how you're going to get the result. If they're trusting you to do their hair, they have to trust you to do it. 
the way that's going to work out. So I have no problem telling somebody that I'm not going to do their hair if they're not going to let me do it the way it needs to be done. Because people, they get scared of bleach and they think, oh, bleach is bad. And they're, unless you're naturally, like, almost like platinum on your own, there's no high lift out there that's going to get you the platinum block. Like, you have to use bleach. Nice. Jamie wants to know, will this work on black color treated hair? Will it lift my black to a light blonde? I mean, that's going to depend on your hair and the condition your hair is already in. Eventually, yes. If, you're, if your hair is strong enough and healthy enough to handle multiple rounds of lifting, then it can. But that's just up to your individual hair and what, it's, what processes it's already been through. So, you just definitely, if you're doing something that extreme, you definitely want to take it slow. And don't do anything crazy and try to put 40 volume with this all over your head, thinking you're going to get it quicker, because all you're going to do is burn your hair. So. Shelly wants to know, with all the rainbow hair services out there and vibrant colors, what do you tell your clients realistically yeah. about how long the toners will really look good? Um, I always tell them, you know, you have to understand the toners are semi-permanent. Everyone's hair kind of holds them. Differently, some people their toner looks good for a month. Sometimes I have clients that need to come in, you know, every week and a half for a toner refresh. So I just tell them, you know, beforehand, like you know, especially with like these kind of silvery metallic tones. Um, if it's a new client, I'm just like, we're gonna have to see how your hair handles, like how it holds. So with anything, I I just never make promises at all. I just always tell them like everyone's hair is different. I don't know your hair yet. Don't know what it's gonna do. But you can give a general, you know, idea. You got a lot, a lot of people really worried about your trouble combing back out your teeth. Show them, <laughs> uh -huh. show them that it's not a big deal. No, it's not at all. It comes out like literally like a little mask on there. You kind of work it with your finger, it comes right out. I don't know how people haven't teased their hair before, but yeah. man. It's been around, it's like it's been around a while. has been around for a million years. Yeah, it comes right out. Hi from the UK. What Hi. toner will you use? Oh, I'm using all kinds of toners over here. <laughs> Can you give them a little? They might have just joined. Yeah. Get an idea. So we just tuned in. I mixed up a couple of different things. Um, in the first bowl here, I've got the Agora Absolute Silver White in the color Slate Gray. Then in this one here, I have the Blonde Me Toner in Lilac, and I also added some Ice, I believe. Yes, ice, and then a little bit of the Violet Booster, which is 0-89. And then in this one here was Steel Blue. Yeah, Steel Blue. Blonde Me Steel Blue? Yes, Blonde Me Steel Blue. We've got a question of, uh, have you used this on Indian hair, the lightener? Indian hair. Do you think, how are you using No, I haven't done an Indian client, no. But, um, I mean, I've definitely done, like, comparable types of textures. I have a lot of uh, Middle Eastern clients, you know, they've got similar to Indian hair, it's, it's darker and a lot more coarse usually. So I've definitely worked on a lot of different textures and it works great on everybody. Follow up question to that, Lizbeth said, how does it work on Hispanic hair? It works really well. Like my wife's Hispanic, she's uh, almost 100% Mexican and her hair is almost black and coarse and I get her to white. It only takes maybe, I'd say 30 minutes with 20 volume on her root. So if you are not already following me, like she's all over my Instagram page, so you can take a look at my wife's hair. It'll give you an idea of what it can do for Hispanic hair. And what's your Instagram again? It's platinum underscore perfection. Lizette wants to say thanks for these live classes, Mary and Zach. You guys are the best. Oh, thank you. They're fun. Enjoy doing them. Rebecca says, you said it can be a scalp bleach. Do you recommend using this for a blonde root touch-up with levels under five? Yes, I do it every single day. All day, I'm doing root touch-ups. Any, it doesn't, even really dark, like, um, you know, I'm like, I have tons of Asian clients, you know, their hair is some of the hardest hair to lift to platinum. And I use 20 volume and it's, it's never an issue. A big thing with root touch-ups though is you have to make sure your clients come in Often, you can't uh, you can't let them get away with doing their roots every eight weeks if they're platinum and they're that dark because the body heat is going to create bands. So that's why I was saying earlier, if you guys are just tuning in now, it's very important 
to set your prices to where it kind of makes your clients have to come in every four weeks because it's just going to be better for their hair. It's going to be easier for you. Um, so yeah, whenever if my clients want to go past the four week mark, my price goes up because it goes beyond being a root touch up at that point. It really starts becoming a color correction. And just so you guys know, we're not going to be able to see the full finished look in real time, but we're going to post the finished look when we're done. But in the meantime, somebody asked a question before that I would hate to let uh, Zach go without telling us. They just asked for any quick social media tips because oh, you yeah, have done such a great job of growing your Instagram. Yeah, so I always tell people when they ask about social media that it's really important to figure out what you want your niche and your industry to be. So, I mean, Instagram has become such a heavily saturated social media platform and everyone is on there. So there's too many stylists that are just kind of good at everything and they post a little of this, a little of that. I, from the get-go, when I made my page, I've always just had a preference for doing blonde hair. I always had the most fun doing blondes. I thought, I just enjoyed it. So when I decided to make an Instagram, you know, just from the kind of clientele I had started to build, I was like, let me just focus on blondes, and you know, those are the kind of clients that I want to keep getting, so if I only put out there what I want to receive, that's what will come to me. So, figure out what it is you'd like to do. If you'd like to do balayage, if you'd like to do, let's say you're really into doing reds, or you're really into doing vivids, and just kind of like, keep, keep your page specific to whatever you want it to be. And then also, it's really important to be active on Instagram. Like, there's a lot of people that maybe they post, you know, once in a while, you know, once a week, or they're just not consistent. So being active and interacting and following, you know, other other people who you admire is really important. Um, so yeah, I would say those are my two top tips: is staying active and figuring out what you want people to see from you. Awesome. Got a question. Clients who use box color always want super blonde results the first time. How can I get better results than orange and yellow? Well, I mean, you can only do what you can do. You can use all the skill in the world and all your experience, but it, at the end of the day, the chemicals are going to do what they're going to do, and you can't help that. All you can do is make sure that you keep it real with them with your consultation and set their expectations realistically. So you just have to let them know now. When I, when I was still taking new clients, I never would, because sometimes you'll know those clients, they'll be kind of pushing, they'll be like, so what do you think it's gonna look like? What do you think it's gonna come out like? And I'd be like, literally, I don't know. I'd be like, I'm gonna put this on here, I'm gonna get it as light as I can in your time slot, and then whatever color it's at, that's what we'll tone, and then you know we'll see where we go from there. But you can't let them corner you into like, saying this is how it's gonna be, because you don't know. At the end of the day. Bleach is bleach and color is color, so you just have to make sure you know how to work with what you got. Okay, awesome. Zach, thank you so much for your time today. You guys, we are going to show before and after pictures and process pictures. Um, maybe we'll embed a video on him rinsing out the teasing at the bowl <laughs> into the article so you all see the proof. But this is it for the live portion, but you'll see a lot of this because this has been a great fun. And we can't wait to see, Charlotte, what you're going to look like going to high school. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, so much for everything. Thanks, Zach. Platinum Perfection. We love you. And thank you, Schwartzkopf, for professional. <laughs>